Hey everyone, this is the ID Band channel, and this is gonna, this is part two of my View TV AT300 Vidimux tutorial. Now I'll put the link up at the top for part one, but you need to watch that first. It goes into how to record shows over the air with the View TV, how to say how to record them, move them over, edit them, what an MP for is inside and how to meticulous, meticulously go through each frame, cut out the commercials, sync the audio, basically end up with a MTS file or MPEG file that is ready to process in part two. So you should have uh, several MPEGs at this point if you've watched part one. And thank you for your patience. I'm working on new software for this video and it's taken me a while to get up to speed and get everything ready. So um, I've got PDFs and I've kind of made some cheat sheets here. I've got a seven pager of my original for the X264. So there's going to be two parts. There's going to be one part just on XVID for standard definition. Anything off like antenna TV, cozy, just standard definition, uh, you know, DVD type uh, uh, content. And then the second part, I'm going to go through um, X264 or the advanced video codec. So I'm going to start with XVID first. And uh, you'll uh, hopefully I'll leave a little uh, time code maybe uh, it could be about 20 minutes from now, but I'll, I'll try to have something up that you can skip to that. But there is going to be some things in here that uh, I'll, I'll reference. So you might want to just watch uh, both XVID and the X264, because there's things in here that will apply to X264. So, okay. First, getting the PDFs. So go to my website. I've got the link down below, gammaphase.ultravista.org. Go to the search box there under the menu and put in one word, either XVID, X264, or PDF. And then in the search results, they'll have the, the results. And you can go to the web page. It'll be like a scrolling, you use the mouse scroller to move the pages but uh, just click on the pages and then you'll download the PDF or it'll open and you can save it like there so there's some cheat sheets make sure to scroll over for the cheat sheets you'll notice the little icon or picture will have the different you know you can tell which ones they are so let's get started uh, with the encoding part so here is a Vidimux, and we've got version 2.5.6. Uh, there's uh, newer versions, but I've learned on this one, and it's easier for me to cut and edit with this one. Uh, and later videos, maybe a part three, I'll go into, if you use a higher version, you can use a program to uh, basically make the same keys like um, it, whatever keys you use shortcut keys they're different on the newer versions above this but I, I'll show you a program to where you can hit the same key for the newer Avidimux version so it acts just the same as this version so anyway you get all your MPEGs together put them on your hard drive. I'm just using the MPEG here, a royalty free clip. And like I said before, these need to be all uh, compiled or put together so there's no commercial. The audio is synced already on these. So, um, first of all, we're going through XVID. So uh, what I want you to do is go to MPEG-4 ASP XVID, uh, the third one down. So here we get to the configuration button, 
And this is where all the stuff on the PDF is going to come into play. But before I do that, uh, have it all filled out using your PDF. And I think I'll just go through that right now. Um, but I'm going to use these different settings because there's some things I haven't really explained on the PDF. So let me just show you. I'm going to do the video size uh, two pass first. But here's a quick look at what you need to set. You'll have uh, notes onto the side to explaining why uh, as short as an explanation as I can put on the page. So you need to follow, follow. Uh, you know, if you want to quickly do it, just uh, X the uh, and put in the numbers that um, I show you here. Uh, do not use the pack bitstream. Uh, that's not a very good compression. I know I have a question mark, but leave that blank. Make sure you mark all these settings. And this is the final. So that's a quick view of my cheat sheet there. Now let's get to uh, what I'm doing here. Now I use X26 or Xvid, I'm sorry, for standard definition. Um, there's a lot of westerns I've recorded and so all the settings that you saw there are basically all entered because what I did was once I entered everything I hit save as and you can save the show that you're working on label it whatever show you're working on and then the constant quantizer number uh, that's a very important number and it's right here so instead of doing the quantizer I'm going to tell you how I arrived at that number what I did at the very beginning is go to video size to pass. So I wanted it at a certain file size. So I'm going to put 250. That's kind of where I land on the file size. And then I would hit OK. And let's say I have all this set. And it's going to be AVI. So what I do at this point and if you're doing this at home, go ahead and save this video. Uh, so that can be chunking. Uh, basically, what you're finding out is when you when you save. Let me go ahead and save video. I'll just put test A V I. Now this is an MP4. Okay, test already done a test. So this is an MP4, but will, it will still uh, do it. Uh, but I'm going to discard this because uh, uh, XVID is a lower uh, kind of a encoder as far as I'm concerned. But you'll see the quantizer right here, what the number is. So it's more around three. That's where I got the uh, idea and it's doing its first pass right now. So it's been just it's not writing any codec. It's just doing an initial pass to see what kind of bit rate or quantizer um, uh, to do the file size. So now it's on pass two. So here is where it's writing the actual file. Now what you're going to use is the quantizer number. Of course, this is pretty low because uh, I'm not doing this correctly. I'm not using a MPEG uh, that has the higher quality, bigger file size too. But anyway, while it's doing the second pass, get the quantizer number, the, the, the one it's staying on the most, not the lowest quantizer, but you'll get a general feel for the average number. So I'm going to hit abort here. And let's say it was seven, the quantizer was seven. That's how you figure out when you, instead of doing the file size each time, which is going to take a long time for it to do the two pass, it's going to take, 
you know, could take a couple hours instead of one hour if you're just straight one pass um, encoding it. So you would hit the constant quantizer, single pass, and that's where this number comes in. And it said one, but on a regular program on standard definition, I've kind of found out if it's if it's a half hour show, I think it's about a five because uh, uh, these shows are half hour programs. I've got a quantizer of five. So for an hour, I use a quantizer of seven. But you can test it yourself, whatever file size you want to attain. Um, that's you, how you go about in getting that quantizer number. So I'm just going to leave it at seven. And uh, I've already got all these set, of course. All I was looking for was a quantizer, and then I changed it to constant quantizer single pass. So at this point, I would save this. Um, of course, you can go down and select how many uh, threads or cores you want. Uh, this is a dual core, so it has two, but leave it to auto detect is fine. But at this point, you'd hit save as the like name of your show and the quantizer number you're using and save that. So if you're working on a certain program, you can just go to it. And I recommend you name these with a letter first. So like for uh, Laramie, I just put like L1, L2. Uh, so when you're using a quick, uh, like just the keys, like uh, I did hit the space bar and then I would just hit L and then it would go down and enter. So that's a quick shortcut. Uh, if you just name it, it might be harder to use a special program to just auto select and I'll get into that in part three but right now just label it like if your program is called Laramie whatever it is put L1 dash and then Laramie and then the quant uh, the quant consistent uh, quantizer number or CQ number so <clears throat> and that will serve you in the future by doing that. So we've got everything set for the encoding part. Now filters this is something that is not on the PDF. Uh, transformation with the even the uh, XVID I don't think I really need to resize it any because that's already standard definition like 702 by 400 some or 480 something like that uh, so I really don't need to uh, resize. On some of the older standard definition, you have interlace frames. So you're going to start with interlacing. And basically you would test each one of these, um, and each one of them has different settings. There is a lot of settings. Uh, you could be weeks. I think I spent a couple weeks on just all these different uh, interlaced or deinterlaced um, things, trying different settings, and so I had to go through a lot. Uh, I'm just going to give you what I use for high motion, and this has really served me for everything from low motion to high motion. It's Lib AV codec deinterlacer. And it's not very sophisticated. It just has one setting uh, that I use all the time cubic interpolate. I've used all the others, and this looks the best for really high action uh, interlace frames. So I would just hit uh, cubic interpolate, hit OK, and do not click auto level. That will mess up your video, so don't touch that. So hit OK, and then you would have like a noise filter. What that does is, since it's sending the high quality, it groups certain shades and colors together, so it's so the encoder has a better time to or a better way to encode, faster, more efficient. 
it does reduce the color and the grayscale. It simplifies it. So if you have a range of color and shade, it will try to simplify by grouping colors and shades together or kind of like an equalizer or a compressor kind of a thing to where if you have these little dots of gray it will smooth that out if if one color is really close to another color and there's or another shade and there's more shade more of a standard shade then it will bump it up so it's all the same shade so you get more of a smoothness uh, or you could get a if it's kind of a gradual if the original kind of a gradually goes into a different shade across the screen there's going to be like a rainbow effect or that's all I can kind of how to describe it it steps in colors so it looks like you're stepping up each color uh, step by step uh, so that is not that desirable so um, in that case and I always get these this confused so M player denoiser 3d is I what I use for standard definition so the luma is the black and white chroma is color and the temporal strength is just the if you put uh, frames up against each other it's it's that version so I've messed around with this and I think I put like 26 at one time and you'll get a ghosting effect so a image on one frame will bleed in way far ahead into another frame so what I like to do is I like to bump up the black and white probably about a point so it's like five and then the color I like I don't like it to mess around with the color as much so I might bring that down to like one and then bring the temporal strength maybe up to seven but um, these just having this is fine until you can figure out uh, maybe look at your video close to see if if it's it's touching the color too much or the black and white and you can play with these settings um, I have uh, and a couple points won't really you won't really notice it visually very much the temporal strength you might so play around with that but leaving these settings are, is probably pretty standard so there's other uh, D logo um, you can use that I usually don't so I'll leave that out okay that's pretty much all I do for standard definition in XVID is uh, these two filters and that should that should uh, take you a long way so we're done with filters now the audio uh, for Vizio TVs um, there's a lot of AAC uh, but I use MP3 so I I think on 90% of or 99% of my videos uh, basically I use MP3 and I guess I really didn't get into the network storage devices I use so um, this is this is all what you probably should use just as it comes up uh, filters um, probably no change if it's standard definition uh, on the x264 I put it to stereo but that should all be ready to go and it's AVI so we're ready to go here um, usually the audio it's the main there's only one main track here um, but let me get to the network storage device so when you uh, make an AVI, I've got a Western Digital My Cloud. I've got a couple of them, and th they are great for AVIs. You make this, and I can stream this on my Vizio TV, really easy. 
So AVIs are really good for Vizios. MP4s are not, and those are X264. I haven't really found a good way for the cheap Vizio TVs to view it unless I use Plex. So you might want to do all your videos in XVID. Um, so in that case, if you're using high quality stuff, the XVID isn't gonna, it's, there's gonna be some uh, oh, blocking or blocks. Uh, the quality won't look that great uh, because XVID is more for standard definition. But if you use MP4s on a thumb drive, then you can hook it to the Vizio and you can watch your MP4s on thumb drive. So that's a way to get around the network storage device not playing MP4s. So you make your own judgment call on there. I wouldn't do any like 1080p with xvid it just doesn't seem to come out very good it'll be there'll be a lot of block um oh, what do you call it uh blocking square blocks in your video it won't look very good so just put it on thumb drive and put it in the back of your computer you'll have to transfer files to your thumb drive but that's better than doing all your high quality videos in XVID. So just a word to the wise there. So we're ready to go um, add to, and this is what I like to do. I'll go into this real quick. I've already done a couple of these videos. Uh, this is my third one. So I've already got saved these. Let me go in. You just view job list. Um, I can delete it all or whatever. Uh, but I'm going to add this job. I guess I should save project first. Um, I just put in like project. So it will save all the settings. So you've got a backup. In case you want to do this again, all you would do is hit load or run project and it would just load and you'd pick that project file and then all your settings uh, include your including your filters will be there but what we're going to do is we're going to add to job list and we're going to do number three test three and then we would just name it however we wanted to this is an avi test 3 AVI and then hit enter so it's ready to go so I could go into view job list and then run all jobs and it'll go hit this one this one this one and it'll just keep going unless it has like a audio uh, multiple audio then it might pop up and you'd have to click it but otherwise well there's programs out there I might get in part three that will automatically click um, the message box so if there is uh, multiple audios when it loads it will just click it and then it'll continue running so, so stay tuned for part three I'll probably have that up at the top that link uh, once I create part three so we can run all these at once all right i think that would make our avi uh and in part three i'll also talk about tagging your videos putting information in there so i think that's pretty much it, you might want to slowly um go over this video and write down the settings if you don't have the PDFs, um, that's why I'm scrolling through the little cheat sheet right here. So you get a view of that. So let's start with, um, uh, let's go to X264 now. Um, I'm trying to think if I missed anything. Uh, main track. Uh, configure. I leave this alone because usually I don't have an AVI that's over 4 gig. 
Um, no, the shift is already done. I think that's it. I think it's all set. You know, you, once you've had your, you know, whatever your program it is, um, that's all you have to do. So, okay, let's start on, start, let's start over. Let's start on the advanced video codec. Okay, advanced video codec. All right. So this was XVID. This is two six. This is X two sixty four advanced video codec. Now again, I'm going to have a lot of things. Um, all right. So let's load up your MPEGs again, or MTS files. And I'm just using this one MPEG, which was an MP4. I converted it to MPEG just for this video. Um, but usually, you're going to have like a 1080p in here. So at that point, you would zoom, uh, make this smaller so you could get your whole program in uh, so you can see it. Plus, you'll need a i3 or higher uh, to process the audio and video. A dual core will make the, the sound very choppy. You'll go, but, uh, uh, but, uh, 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 you know, that kind of uh, weirdness will go on with your audio when you're trying to sync it. So you're going to need an i3 or above uh, for you to sync the audio. But like I said in the first uh, part of this video, it, th these should all be done using uh, the part one. So you shouldn't have to uh, sync the audio anymore. So we're going to go up here, MPEG-4 AVC, Advanced Video Codec. Okay, and then the configure part, there is a lot of things we need to put in here. A lot more than the XVID. So I've already got one. And here again, I didn't label it right. I wish I would label it like with a letter and a number and then the program name the codec, constant rate factor, and some other things uh, I'll get into. So I started with 18. I, uh, the more I'm doing it, I'm going to go up to 20. But again, like on um, XVID, what I did was once I put in all my information, instead of my constant quantizer which is basically what I use all the time if I'm just new to this I do video size and that's what I've done so 250 meg like again I told you in XVID um, uh, portion that the reason why I put it down to 250 here is I've got a Western Digital My Cloud it doesn't like the higher uh, uh, file sizes, uh, like uh, the 1080p. If I were to not resize this down to a lower dimension, like if I just take this 1080p video and uh, not change the the dimensions of this that would be a like a, a gig file so 250 so we're going to resize this video now if you want to keep 1080 what you're going to have to do is do a more reasonable file size like um, 500 meg or above uh, a lot of times I'll see movies at one gig. So uh, for that higher, if you want that 1080p and above, you're going to have to put a, a more realistic target video size. But since I'm recording it, or I'm going to um, resize it to 720 by 400, somewhere around there, 
I'm going to do 250 meg from the file size. That should be plenty. Uh, yeah, video size. And then I'm going to do a whole program. And while, and like I did in X, XVID, I'm just going to go ahead and save this video to show you uh, test for I'm just gonna quickly start this okay so this is the first pass and it's gonna go on for for several or maybe an hour 40 minutes an hour depending on what CPU you've got and what it's doing is it's judging each frame by the quality so it's getting an idea of what kind of quality this needs. So when it does the second pass, it can put each frame to that quality to end up at 250 meg. So I'm going to hit, I'm, well, I'm just going to leave this go. Because what I'm looking for is once this does its first pass, and since this is a small video, it will end here real quick. It's like only a four minute video. So it's going to go into the second pass here, and that's where I get the quantizer number. So as it goes, it'll uh, get the quantizer number. Now, this says zero is because this is a small video and it's already been optimized and it doesn't know what to think. Uh, it's not really getting a, a handle on the file size, but normally on a real big video this quantizer is going to go up to like 18 19 20 so I'm going to hit pause and, ab and just abort here so let's say it said the number was like 18 so we would change this to a constant quantizer of 18 or if I wanted it a little little lower uh, I wasn't sure that it quite get the and that's just the video part so it, it doesn't take into account the audio so it's going to be bigger than 250 I believe so I usually just bump it up one uh, and since I've done this so long I usually use 19 or 20 sometimes but whatever number you start out with it'll be somewhere around that range so that's the most important number right there is this quantizer number. So let's go to X264 here. The, you can see my notes here. Um, this is the target uh, dimension. Now, the reason why I do that is I want this to be playable on my uh, tablets and my TV. This is such a good um, codec that um, even even when it has to uh, zoom out or um, balloon up, it still has a great looking quality to it, even on a, a big 55-inch uh, screen. So I'm not worried about reducing this in size because I see what it looks like on a regular TV and you they're, they're, it's great quality even when it has to resize to the bigger screen. So let's get into I guess I didn't really go through all the settings here so let me give you a good look at the settings so you can um, go to these and pause pause this video whenever you've got everything set. Uh, so pause it right now, fill in your settings here, that page, uh, maybe go forward and, and get a little bit more. Here's the second page. You can pause it, fill, fill stuff out, and you'll notice that uh, they have uh, uh, guidelines here. That's the best stuff I could pull off the internet for what these do. Um, of course, using the seven page one, I'll give you a quick look at that. 
so you can pause this video if, if you can't download my PDFs I'll give you a little quick look-see so you can pause through this pick up what you need to pick up and uh, so you don't really need to download the PDFs but I urge you to because uh, you'll need to refer back to these so there's let me see what page am I on uh, six a lot of stuff here I have a little bit more um, notes on here and that's it seven pages so hopefully that gives you an idea you can kinda go back through there to pick all these uh, different settings so this is my flash one I've set so you too can just go and pause hopefully that wasn't too fast pause all my settings and to fill yours out so filters here is what's not in the PDFs okay I use M player resize because I'm gonna move this let's say this was a uh, the flash and it's 1080p I would round this to the nearest sixteenth and go 720 for the width and then I think the height would be about 400 so you do that by percentage go down to that met the 720 for the width and there's a resizing method and I don't think I added those on the new PDF on a new PDF so take note of this bilinear is smooth picture uh, the easiest encoding the bicubic is like the middle grade sharp uh, but harder a little bit harder to encode and then the length lens cos 3 that is the top uh, the sharpest picture the most detail uh, but it'll be a little bit slower but I always use this setting here so that's my first filter my second one is noise um, although uh, on agents of shield if you I've noticed um, M player M player equalizer 2 I think I use on agents of shield I noticed depending on the show you're recording you'll get if you look real close you'll see like little lines um, or imperfections once you resize it and if it's if it's too noticeable if you see a lot of like garbage because when it when it resizes it it kind of pushes things together if it's too bright you can always use your brightness and and just kind of tone it down so in the darks sometimes there'll be lines really noticeable so you just all I needed to do was just do it like a minus one sometimes a minus two and that gets rid of the lines it's it's how it's however they sent the program uh, a little bit brighter so you could see but then you see imperfections so that's a little cheat way to get rid of imperfections you see if you don't see any imperfections you probably won't need it um, but you do that or uh, the next thing you do is do your noise filter high quality denoise 3d and here again like in xvid the luma is the black and white the chroma is the color so usually on these shows like the flash or agents I always turn the color way down uh, the reason why I do that is if there's like a haze from one color to a blue like a light blue to a dark blue and it's kind of like you're at a you're watching a sky um, the what this does is it tries to uh, put the colors together in one color so the higher this number the more it's gonna try to change one shade of blue 
to just a solid shade of blue so you don't get as much detail uh, so the lower this number the less it mucks around with the color and I found on some of them they do kind of like a like a like a dart you know how a dart target map has these rings well that's what colors will do they'll have kind of a ring of blue then all of a sudden it'll step up to a brighter blue then it'll go for a while and then like stair steps and it's a little unsightly to see so you can what I do is I push this down to like one uh, you, you're gonna have higher file sizes uh, because of this but it's not that much more so the Luma I like to maybe bump up to like five or beyond and the temporal I'll bump up to like seven uh, especially on the CW where they have 60 frames a second um, that's a lot more than 30 frames obviously so you can afford to bump this temporal strength up and what it does and what I've I've done is bump this up to like 26 just to see what it would do and it it creates a ghosting image of previous frames so if there's people moving, if it's switched to a whole different scene, you'll still see the people. It's kind of like an after image or ghosting effect. So basically that just stretches from frame to frame. And with these high frame rates, um, bumping this up eight to even 12, I, I don't think would really hurt because they've got twice as many frames as your standard 30 frames or 29.97. So you can you can maybe play with that a little bit, but this is pretty much how what I use. So let's hit OK. Um, I don't use any logo away, but you can do that if you so if you want to. And that's it. Just basically the resize, maybe the color, and of course the denoise. So those are my settings for that uh, that I don't have on the PDFs. Uh, I think I explained why the resize to view on my tablet and to stream on my Western Digital My Cloud. Um, it's just better with lower file sizes. If I had a gig in there, it would, it might stop to cache on whatever system I'm playing it on. Uh, plus, I mean, with its being standard definition, I could possibly burn these to DVD if I wanted to, but I'm all digital now um, okay so let's go to the audio uh, AAC or mp3 but 99% I do mp3 just use the settings here that it comes up with now the filters on advanced video codec you will ha oftentimes have several channels a couple so I always change it to stereo because when I'm playing it on tablet you just need stereo just my TV stereo I have a sound bar but it's more or less stereo uh, unless you have a system that you need to have the five channel or uh, all these different settings you can set to what you you're set up to uh, audio wise we won't need to change the gain although I did that I did do some gain if I don't record it right, the audio, like the Avermedia hybrid PCI capture card, it would always have low audio. So you can just do manual and kick it up. I had to kick it up like uh, to uh, two uh, for the gain. Uh, so if it if it's low, you might considering you might consider boosting the gain. But most of the time, if you're recording off UTV, you won't need to mess with the gain. But capture cards, uh, if you have your computer mixer not set up right, um, I'm going to turn the system down here. But um, if you have this low and your, your capture card records the audio low for whatever settings you have, um, you might have to adjust the gain but I'm just going to hit none for right now. Uh, and that was for filters. Uh, like I said, no need to time shift uh, because it should have been done in part one. 
So here we would pick the MP4 container to hold the XVID. So we are ready. If you want to take a look at your output, you can hit this. This goes to output. Of course, I showed a lot of what this does in part one. So I'm really not needing to um, check the frames. Of course, the very first frame has to be an iframe. That's in part one. Um, anyway, that should be good. Um, at this point, you would save your work. So you would just put project. Of course, I already made a project follow this because uh, that was with the AVI. But yeah, you just hit project and hit save. And that saves all your work. So um, it saves your filters, stuff like that. Of course, you didn't have any cuts, so, but if you did have cuts in this portion, it would save your cuts as well. So you're ready to add to your job list here. So you just do that, add to job, put the name, put, you know, the series, episode, or whatever you want to identify with it, or just just the, the name, just to get it, just to have some name in there. Or you can just right now, you can just save it. Save video. You just pick the name MP4 and hit save, and then it'd start crunching. So if this is an hour, it'll probably take, like with my dual core, it'd take uh, maybe an hour. With my uh, i3, it takes like maybe a half an hour, 20 to 30 minutes, somewhere in there. So. Um, that's it. Uh, you would just go and do all your jobs, add them. Um, I think I went through all the configuration. Uh, this little cheat sheet kind of told me, um, what I'm using, um, kind of my methodology here resizing um, I think that is it uh, let me see here okay so this kind of uh, comes to an end as far as um, the codec, I think I showed you on screen my little cheat sheet so you'll be able to get started without downloading the PDF, but I really recommend you do that, download it. Now, um, in part three, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into a lot of, after you've done this, uh, you've got XVID, you've got AVIs, and you've got MP4s. So, I'm going to go through kind of some really neat tr neat things you need to have. Computer programs, um, like some tag programs to write the comments, the date you made it, um, you know, just some tag information. I'll go through the AVI and MP4. There are certain programs I use. Um, and if you're streaming on a TV, um, uh, especially if you're putting these MP4s, uh, especially even if you have a network storage device, the only way you're going to play MP4s, if you've got a Vizio, is put your MP4s you just made, put it on a thumb drive or a hard drive, a USB uh, 2.0 hard drive, and that way you'll be able to stream it, stream it on your um, TV using the USB in back of the TV. I recommend a um, a uh, extension cord so you don't have to go in back there and reach your arm around. Get a little extension cord so you can just have it in front of your TV. But that's mostly how I what I just showed you when I make my MP4s. I'll put them on here to view it. Um, so or uh, MPEGs, just the solid MPEGs will work. Uh, you don't even have to encode these. 
you can have the four gig MPEG files and the TV should run it fine without any glitches. But uh, when you put your MP4s on here, um, because you can't use the Western Digital MyCloud to stream, the DLNA section will pick up AVIs before MP4s or MKVs. Uh, MKVs will not work either on the TV. So if you put an MKV on here, it won't recognize it. So there's converter programs I'll get into to part three, how to change your MKV to MP4 um, if you download MKVs. Uh, I've just got a whole bunch of converter programs uh, that I need to show you. Um, some programs I've made, uh, how to, let me see, I might even go into how to capture off your, like if you're streaming it on your computer, there's computer programs to capture what you're seeing off your browser. I might get into that. Um, oh, and the MP4s that you create, and even stuff you get off of, of pirated websites or whatever, when you put this in your, your TV and navigate to the MP4, the date will not show up correctly, even though you have it date stamped on your computer. And I figured out a way to change that using a certain program and a batch file. I can just drag an MP4 onto this batch file, and I'll get into that in part three, how to use a third-party software to actually go in. You can actually tell it what date you want it to say it was encoded. And I think there's a couple dates, encoded date and tagged date that this tags. And the other tag for the date is used by this other software. But the one the Vizio TV um, puts up is uh, something special. So you have to have a special program to, to do it. But it just copies the, the, the MP4, the, it just copies the codec and the audio and then slips in the date. So it's a real fast copy. Um, it'll only take like for a regular program, it'll only take, if it's 250 meg, it'll only take like 10 seconds. So uh, look forward to part three. I get into all the programs I use. Uh, I might even get into the new Virtual Dub 2 because it handles XVID 2. Sometimes I do uh, AVIs off my computer screen when I'm doing these videos and I'll use that. I'll use lossless codec. I'll just get into like a half a dozen programs, uh, have some script for changing the date. So stay tuned for uh, all those, uh, or part three actually. And before I do part three, uh, I want you to kind of go through um, and get all your questions and put, put your questions down in the comments. So when I go to part three, uh, I'll be able to answer your maybe your comments, maybe put a program in there, or uh, just generally talk about uh, what everyone's talking about or any questions. So get your questions up if you have any. Uh, download the PDFs. I hope this uh, this video has gone quite a long time, but I had to get everything in, kind of give you a peek at all the settings instead of making you download the PDF, but I really uh, think that that would be the best way. The PDF has more explanations to it. Um, so I hope this has been helpful. Uh, stay tuned for part three. Keep coming back to the ID Band channel for more great videos, and uh, have a good one. And uh, don't forget to leave the comments. Uh, watch part one if none of this has made sense. Or if you can't get it going, go to part one. I'll have that up in the corner. And any other videos, maybe I'll have a link to also the View TV one. If you're just getting started with cord cutting, uh, go to my, uh, go to the ID Band channel, and I've got plenty of videos of how to be a cord cutter, uh, my setup, my antenna. Uh, so I'll leave some of the, those videos up in the links there that you can go to. Um, 
I should probably sign off now. Have a good one. Hope this helped. Uh, keep coming back to the ID Band channel and subscribe if you like. Thanks.